Welcome to Basin. Welcome back to everyone who's already a subscriber to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now. First time guest on the show, The Sandstorm, Jimmy Sandlin. Jimmy, welcome to the program, sir. Glad to be on. Great having you on. We are just under a month. Yesterday was a month away from April 20th, Brawlenburg 21 for 247 Fighting Championships at Hollywood Casino at the Meadows, where you are taking on UFC veteran, uh, comma, the Death Star Worthy, and also sort of a local hero who's been around Pittsburgh forever, who had already won uh, a couple belts for 247 prior to going to the UFC. How are you feeling uh, being a month out from your big fight? I feel phenomenal being this far out. Um, training's been going great. My body's been feeling great, and I've been making some pretty big gains. And uh, the opponent, that, that excites me the most, honestly, uh, just just because he's that big of a name. He's a legend, and he's won a couple belts for 247. So the, the best thing that I could do is literally go to his hometown and then beat him there and make some big noise. That would definitely be making big noise. Speaking of making big noise, pretty much exactly a year ago from your Kyle Worthy fight back on April 23rd, 2023, you made big noise in a fight where you knocked out your opponent in the first round with punches. Talk a little bit about that. And, and how does that make you feel coming into this fight? Even though it's been a year, do you feel like you're you're kind of on a good, uh, a, a bit of a good clip in MMA? Oh, yeah. Um, that was definitely my favorite fight, my favorite trip I've ever had. So we end up driving up to Toronto, Canada, and pretty much, I mean, that guy was from Ontario, so it was kind of his hometown in a way. But I, I felt phenomenal. I, I didn't care about the pressure. I didn't care about being the underdog, and I just kind of found my flow and caught him early in the fight. Uh, and then since then, I've just tried to stay on track. I've been training super hard. I've been making very much need needed improvements. And coming into this comma worthy fight, even though it's pretty much a year after the fact of my last fight, I, I still feel great. I still feel like I'm in a really good position. We've tried to get many fights since the Canada fight, but a lot of fights fell through. Uh, opponents dropped out or opponents got uh, switched fights somehow, even though like they would sign for me. I don't know how that shakes out, but, but I've just tried to stay on track. You know, I try not to let it get to my head too much and just keep my eyes on the prize. Like I know what my goals are and I knew it was just a matter of time before I got an opponent. And this is probably the best opponent I could have got. So the weight was worth the weight. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you have that attitude. It's also nice to hear that, you know, there's a certain amount of respect and understanding between you two as fighters. You know, I've known Kama a long, long time. And I know that, you know, he's a professional, you're a professional. That's what you guys get paid to do. Uh, you talked about your, your goals. Where, where do you, where do you see those goals going and talk a little bit more about what you what you think this fight's going to look like April 20th against probably the most seasoned, at least as far as being a former UFC fighter. Not only that, a UFC fighter that won upset uh, or underdog win of the year in his debut, uh, knocking out uh, Devontae Smith, who at the time I think was, I mean, the odds were very stacked, you know, so he has some of, of excitement with that. But talk a little bit about where, where you see your goals going and how does uh, – um, future win over comma play into that i guess first speaking of underdog i've had 27 fights total from amateur to pro and maybe two or three fights i've been the favorite so every fight i've had i've been the underdog so i guess in a way i'm for sure the underdog coming into this fight but that that doesn't phase me if anything that gives me an edge mm -hmm. um and then as far as like looking at his career you know, he obviously he's legend from Pittsburgh, UFC fights. Uh, mul he's won multiple two four seven belts. So my goals, my goals for fighting really is just 
win as many belts as I can and make it to the big show. Whichever one comes first, it doesn't matter. Um, and, and big big fights like this, you know, that could catapult me to the next level or to like a title opportunity. And that's pretty much why I train and why I fight is to make it to the top, to be the best and to be on the big shows. And also he, he's had a couple opponents. Uh, he's fought a couple opponents that I've been trying to fight anyways. So now it's kind of like I see a path. I see opportunity and April 20th, I plan to take full advantage of all of that. Makes perfect sense. I know it's super exciting being, being somebody that's followed 247 for a while. Um, I love it when people come in, we, we, you can't have a fight without the, the opponent, right? Be, without you coming in, without whoever's coming in to fight the people that are, that are more or less the hometown guys. I think that's what makes every card super exciting. The legendary matchmaker, Jim Mooney uh, has, has told me and it's public that, that he has said it on shows that he really wants like a balanced outcome, right? If it's all Pittsburgh winning every, uh, every fight, uh, it, it means he's not doing a good job bringing in, you know, bringing in competitive fighters. So it's a super exciting uh, promotion uh, as far as as far as that goes. Would you like to give a prediction? I know you've given your thoughts. Would you like to give a prediction on your fight versus comma as we look forward to April 21st, uh, April 20th, we're on the Berg 21. And for people that aren't going to be making the trip in from Dayton for you, they can get the pay-per-view on either the 247 Live app, which is super cool because 247 Fighting Championships has an actual app. People can download on their phone and stream the pay-per-view through that or even get a yearly subscription. So what is your prediction on the fight, sir? Yeah, for the ones who can't make it, you know, I've got a pretty good following of people between different cities and states and countries now i've made a lot of friends with people from canada so I'm, I'm sure i'll get a lot of people tuning in and with this type of level of fight you know comma is a huge name i people know who i am uh you know i, I plan to make an exciting fight as far as a prediction i, I see my hand getting raised for sure um i kind of see some similarities between my fight from a year ago mm. coming into somebody's hometown and just going for it so like ever since then this phrase keeps popping through my head go get it because i've had a lot of fights you know where i lose by decision and the decision is super controversial so mm -hmm. ever since last year just that phrase and that kind of like mantra go get it like that that's been my edge and that's kind of what i plan to do for april 20th well, I appreciate you sharing uh, your thoughts with it. The go get it mantra mindset is really great. Um, I appreciate you taking time out now a month under for uh, under a month. And your fight is going to be the second night. It's actually a double header event with Sprawl the Berg uh, being a cage grappling, submission only grappling event. And then Braun the Berg being all MMA the next day. Same cage, back-to-back -back event. It's going to be absolutely incredible for people local enough that might be seeing this. Get your tickets on 247fighting.com. Make sure you select uh, Jimmy to support him. And if you're doing pay-per-view, same thing. Give uh, give Jimmy credit. But in, in arena, tickets are most likely going to sell out. The, the casino is an incredible environment. People always love it. The last time they did a, a, a show at um, this venue, it sold out legitimately where there was no more space. So now it's time to get tickets, particularly if you want to be in person. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. This is Luke Mason from May Fancast with the Sandstorm. Uh, Jimmy, thanks so much for taking time. Can't wait to see you in the cage April 20th first. The Death Star, comma worthy. Thanks so much. I'm very honored. I'm very honored for the opponent, and I'll be ready for sure. You got it. See you there.